how to build a scalable notification infrastructure so when i say notification uh, i'm not referring to the promotional notifications that you get from you know uh, e-commerce applications uh, gaming apps you know things like that notification is essentially a piece of information that you have to send to your user so that they can take some actions let's consider the example of a social network like instagram you uploaded a photo and then someone comments on that photo so instantly you get notified that this person commented on your photo so that you get the opportunity to engage with that user let's try to understand how to build a scalable notification infrastructure in your product building a scalable notification service is really tough it's very difficult to build a system that scales you need to satisfy some of the functional and non functional requirements that is essential for a notification service so let's look at each of the service i mean requirements so it should support multiple channels like email sms in app um maybe other channels like whatsapp slack discord depending on the nature of your application so this means that we have to integrate a lot of third party provider apis for example for email we might be using sendgrid or mailgun or amazon scs for sms we might be using twilio and for in app some other you know real time apis obviously there needs to have a lot of third party api integrations and you need to have a, a better way to manage and monitor these integrations so that's one requirement the functional requirement then templated notifications so we said that we are going to route the notifications through multiple channels and so how are we going to manage the content of these notifications it it is not you know recommended to hard code the content in our source code right because whenever we have to edit the source code we have to go through all those you know deployment and release testing cycles and also it might break things so we don't want to touch the code to change the notification content right so we need to have a template management module where uh, we can you know separate uh, the the template the notification copy from source code and then user uh, preferences notification preferences so what does this mean um you need to give the flexibility for your users to control what kind of notifications they want to receive from your app um let us take the same example of a social network so you might be sending you know different kinds of notifications sometimes it's going to be a you know notification that informs us about a new comment sometimes it's about a new like sometimes it's about uh, the account security or you know account level notifications sometimes it's about the billing or subscription related alerts so you need to give the user the flexibility to choose what kind of notification they want to receive and through what all channels for example some someone want to receive the comment related notifications only through email and not as push notifications because that is annoying for them so that that kind of fine grained access i mean fine grained preference control module should be there so we have to build that and um i would like to highlight two non functional requirements here one is uh, high throughput and low latency so as as the number of users in your app scales the triggers i mean the notification triggers will obviously increase and this shouldn't slow down your notification delivery pipeline right so especially in the case of social networks you might be uh, triggering thousands or maybe hundreds of th- thousands of notifications and this shouldn't slow down the performance of the notification delivery pipeline otherwise i mean um, if the throughput if the notification throughput is low then obviously that means that your latency will be high for example if 1000 notifications get pushed into the message broker or the or the queue then um, you should ensure i mean your system should ensure that all these 1000 notifications are processed and delivered in a timely manner now high availability and horizontal scalability 
again let's talk about uh, the, that horizontal scalability part your application is going to grow and you will have a lot of users and you will have to process a lot of notifications then you should design the system in such a way that you know you can easily scale the system by adding more resources obviously you will be using aws or azure or you know any kind of cloud platform so your system should be designed in such a way that it could be easily scaled in distributed cloud environment then comes high availability so high availability means that your system should be always available irrespective of any network issues or you know such things happening in your data center so how can you achieve this maybe you know by having the same instance replicated across multiple availability zones in your aws regions we have a lot of options to ensure high availability for the notification system now let's look at a diagram uh, that explains how we can build a basic system a basic notification system that is scalable right yeah we have a send notification api service that 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 does the job of you know accepting the request the send notification api request from the developer and what it does is that it won't try to send the notification by its own what it does is that it just pushes the notification into a message worker such as Kafka or RabbitMQ. Totally an asynchronous process. We don't try to send the notification directly from this service. So the developer sends a request, a POST request to the REST API and they are essentially connecting with the load balancer here and then the load balancer routes that request to any one of the running services notification api services there so we will have this notification service distributed across multiple um, availability zones within an aws region so as soon as an api request a sent notification api request is received by the service what it does is you know it simply sends a 202 http status code back to the uh, developer do you know what to mean is that the request has been accepted but it will be processed later it simply pushes the notification into a message queue such as kafka or rabbitmq in this case we will be discussing rabbitmq so rabbitmq accepted the notification then we have two pipelines two phases of the delivery pipeline here one is the pre-delivery worker that performs the job of um, you know validations whether the recipient exists whether the notification needs to be patched and whether this particular user needs to receive this notification based on the preferences set by them then if it's a template notification obviously we have to parse the template get the right content and you know finally parse the template for each of the channels so those those kinds of works will be handled by the pre-delivery worker once a pre-delivery worker finishes its job it then again pushes the notification to another message queue so again we are using a rabbitmq message broker here um, from here that message gets picked up by another worker called the delivery worker he manages the process uh, the job of calling uh, the provider's api and pushing the final notification to them right so that is the job handled by the delivery worker we have a separate log aggregator service that receives the logs of the notifications sent through each of the provider it aggregates the log and then finally it writes into a separate uh, a data store such as Cassandra or any kind of NoSQL data store. So uh, let's look into each of the components inside the pre-delivery worker. Right. So first one is a user validator. When the user, I mean when the developer sends the API request, it will have a template ID. Then um, the recipient ID right the unique id of the recipient so 
at this step we will validate whether the recipient actually exists in our application if the recipient is invalid we will simply discard that notification otherwise we will proceed to the next step in the pipeline which is uh, the batcher the notification batcher so this process checks whether this notification needs to be batched you know for some kind of uh, notifications like comment notification in a social network we might have to apply some kind of time window based batching um, let's say the social network generated I mean a, a particular photo uploaded to a social network generated over 20 comments in less than 5 seconds then instead of sending 20 individual notifications we have to batch them together and say like Anand and 19 others commented on your photo so that kind of logic should be handled by the notification batcher so the implementation of this notification batcher is beyond the scope of this video but I will explain it uh, briefly so we can use a redis that stores list of uh, all the notifications that are currently being batched so if the same notification i mean if another notification of the same type um, is received in the batcher then instead of sending it right away it is directly pushed into the into the batcher queue um, with that particular you know window period for that particular notification so after the window period a job is invoked and that particular job does the function of taking all the all the queued batch notifications and processing them according to the the logic of the batcher and then again pushing it to the next step to the delivery worker queue so the next step is the user preference checker so we have to check whether this particular notification is allowed by the user in their you know preference settings it involves several you know uh, queries to the database to find out the preferences for each of those channels and then we will decide whether this notification needs to be discarded or we should send it so let's say if you want to send it um, so at this step essentially what happens is that you know we have uh, we figured out the channels through which this notification should be sent to that user maybe they have enabled email in app and sms all the three channels so um, this gets split into three from here so we have three different messages that needs to be parsed right for the sms there will be a, a separate template for the email and for the in-app there will be different templates so we will pick the right template from the database and if in the case of email the template might be in an s3 bucket so we will fetch the template uh, you know parse it with the the additional key value pairs supplied by the developer in the rest api so we'll parse the final notification so we have uh, three notifications now after this step so those get pushed into another queue uh, another message queue called uh, the the delivery queue so this is the delivery queue and this was the pre-delivery queue okay so from here the delivery worker picks up this notification so at this step each notification is ready to be sent through a particular provider right because we have done we have completed all the batching and all those pre delivery processing works so let's say this delivery worker receives the email delivery job right also at this step we we will figure out which is the ideal channel I mean ideal provider for the email channel let's say in this case we have decided uh, to use mailgun as email provider so we have a job an email delivery job that must use mailgun as the provider so it goes through the email handler and you know um, it performs some of the basic checks like whether the email is valid uh, you know before trying to attempt I mean before attempting to contact the mailgun API we could apply some processing here whether you know all the fields that are required by the mailgun are available in the message received and finally we will call the mailgun send API and you know pushes the notification into their send pipeline we have one intermediate component here which is called the rate limiter 
each of these providers will have different rate limits for their send notification API. For example, if Mailgun allows us to send only you know 100 calls per second for the send API, then we will have to uh, include a rate limiter here, which can be again implemented using a Redis in-memory store. So we will have a rate limiter here. So then the Mailgun sends a notification and we will get the log and the status of the notification back from uh, Mailgun which will be picked up by our log aggregator service which is again it's going to be a webhook a call from Mailgun maybe so Mailgun sends us the webhook status so the log aggregator will push that particular log status into the Cassandra data store so we know what are the events happened to the notification that we try to send so just like how it handles Mailgun, it gets you know it can be sent through other providers API. It is just a network call that is happening here. Uh, you know we are simply calling the sent API of all these providers. So the one thing that needs to be considered in this delivery worker is that you know it involves opening a lot of HTTP requests. One of the bottlenecks of this particular delivery workers is going to be these AP calls. Since it involves the opening, I mean, of, you know, HTTPS calls. Essentially, this is the simplest way to design a scalable notification system. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.